Dane Brugler of The Athletic just released the top 50 big boards, so you know we got to react to that sucker. What's crack a lackey? It's your boy, Baroshmo. Just in case you did not know so, we're going to go ahead and look at the, this, man. I love looking at other people's opinions because you know what? People come from it with different perspectives, and maybe they're seeing something you don't. I already have my top 200 big board out on the channel if you want to check that out and as always you could always go to the patreon and get my full prospect rankings for the 2023 nfl draft class i know it's a bit early but hey it's a good watch list of players to uh, look out for this season by the way we're gonna have a watch uh, watch along this uh, uh saturday that's right for oregon versus georgia so hopefully that's a banger and on top of that man i got a three round NFL mock draft coming out where I'm uh, getting together with Alex. So that ought to be a ton of fun. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm kind of curious what his top five, top 10 looks like. But yeah, I'm expecting Will Anderson. I'm expecting like Will Anderson. Well, I guess uh, Will Anderson, uh, Jalen Carter, um, CJ Stroud, probably Bryce Young. I know some people are a little lower on Miles uh, Murphy, so I still expect Miles Murphy to be like a top 10 guy, but uh, maybe that means Kylie Ringo slides into the top 10. I'm kind of or top five. I'm kind of curious really what that top five is, but let's go ahead and look at this sucker. He has Will Anderson. Not, not much to argue with here, man. The dude's been phenomenal for Alabama back-to-back -back years quite frankly he probably really doesn't even need to perform well this he just probably doesn't even need to play this year based on his last two prior seasons of production but hey dude dude's gonna be a top prospect easy uh here's jalen carter man a lot of people really like jalen carter i like jalen carter where, where do i have him on my uh top board i got him at four on my big board currently so Hey, man, Jalen Carter's a stud, dude. There's literally not much to dislike about his game, man. This guy is was, for me, the best Georgia prospect on that defense last year. Uh, CJ Stroud is his first quarterback, which should be surprising to too many just based on... Um, oh, just uh, He's got traditional, like, he's got ideal size. He's got a good arm. A uh, good NFL arm. Again, signs were pointed in the right direction after the bowl game, so expecting him to look a lot better this year. So, yeah, he's for some people he's gonna be the top quarterback. I tend, I still lean Bryce Young, but I expect to see Bryce Young fairly soon on this list. So Kylie Ringo, oh, is number four. I wonder if Bryce Young's going to be number five. That's interesting, dude. I love Kyler Ringo. He's my top corner. I th he's number six on my big board. The dude is just amazing, man. Dude's got legit burners, great closing speed, great size. Oh, just love it. Yeah, I, I really don't think there's a corner that can touch him in this class. All right, let's keep this rolling. All right, there's Bryce Young. So, again, the typical... For the top five for people are Bryce Young, CJ Shroud, Will Anderson, and Jalen Carter. So he's got Ringo. I got Murphy. Uh, I think it really goes without saying. Um, Young, it's size concerns. That's probably going to be um, be the thing for him in the NFL, especially if, Str well, in this draft process, especially if Shroud ends up pushing his stock to that top top five level then i could see a lot of teams opting for shroud over young just because of the size all right number six. Oh, what a surprise trent simpson or trenton simpson i love him i love simpson that dude is my cup of tea when it comes to linebackers like i, I love the dude's movement skills i love his coverage prowess so yeah, he is kind of like today's and like what NFL teams are kind of like really trying to move towards and look for in today's linebackers. So I have no problem with that. I got him a lot lower on my list though, uh, twenty seven. But again, I'm kind of low on the linebacker class overall. All right, we got a nice, nice picture of Mister. Uh, Brian Breezy. 
or breeze is it, it's breezy right okay let me look how to pronounce this i got the pronunciation written down brazi okay brian brazi all right uh number seven yeah like he's a really like it's like it's really good um i got i mean of course there's questions can he return to form after injury because he only played four games last year uh i don't think he's got incredible get off and i think kind of like what he does is like he's got good short area quicks he's got a great motor and he kind of wins with that but uh, i got my i got some hesitations when it comes to him, I think there's times he like struggles, like, I guess disengaging on blocks. But I mean, I can't say nothing. I had to do in my top 20. I'm a big fan. Uh, Nolan Smith, though, this is my biggest gripe. Uh, if you're not new to the channel, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Nolan Smith. I get it. Guys like what he can be. The athleticism, uh, the twitchiness, I guess, is he up to 237? Because last time I had him down was 235. Ain't that big of a difference. Like, I got him as a top 75 prospect. <coughs> Excuse me. I get why some people have him as a first-round prospect, but top 10, man? Maybe I'm just a bit more hesitant on that. Like, again, lean. You look at that size, and there's concerns typically. You want them at least to be 240-plus at least and like i don't know I mean, there ain't strength in this cat's frame his win rate wasn't great even when he got the starting job back last year it's not like he had a great win rate i don't know we'll see we'll see i get it man i get it this guy's a incredible athlete great explosiveness super twitchy I get why people like him wow dude the balls on dane brugler i love this dude all right, well, first off, there's my boy, Miles Murphy, but Christian Gonzalez. Listen, this guy was stupid sticky in coverage for Colorado. He now moves over to Oregon, or how I like to call it, West Coast Georgia. And, man, th this guy's got size, length, speed, like legit speed. So I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited about that. I have him. Where is he on the big board? I got him 36. Brugler got him nine. Oh, wow. Did make some, he did make the freaks list also as well. Uh, Miles Murphy, I get it. He could probably polish up on his pass rush technique, but I just feel like he's so physically imposing and he's just a specimen in general that he, he's going to he's gonna warrant a top five pick. Like if Trevon Walker is the first overall pick, like Miles Murphy's top five pick. Just gonna say that. Uh, Will Levis here, number eleven. Yeah, I want to see more consistency from him. Like there, yeah, he had a bad string of luck last year. In some cases with uh, interceptions being or tipped balls being the tipped balls resulting in interceptions. But there were plenty of plenty of plays last year where he got away with dropped interceptions. So obviously, seeing the decision making clean up a bit oh uh, and really just showing more consistency he's coming from a pro style like offense with a lot of nfl passing concepts so i don't know a lot, uh, dude's good he's also gonna be a bit a uh, bit of an older prospect i think he's gonna be 24 when he um at the beginning of his rookie year after he's drafted so 24 gonna be a bit older I don't know, man. If he shows he's ready to play, then guys, people will just see this dude as plug and play and be like, yeah, run it. So I got him as top 50. I'm willing to go a little higher on him. I don't know if he'll ever be top 20 for me, though. Maybe. Maybe I'll get around to that. Yo, Bijan Robinson. I love Bijan Robinson. I don't mind him here at 12. I got him at like 23, but I, I would be willing to take him inside the top 20. The dude is really like a a bull that learned how to ballroom dance in close quarters, man. 
Like, good luck, dude. Good luck. I, uh, I just love this dude's contact balance. Thick tree trunk thighs. Good luck taking him down. Shows a little bit of explosiveness. Literally could cut and turn on a dime. Um, if anything, there are going to be questions about his long field speed, but I kind of think it is what it is. At 13, this one's pretty... Uh, pretty intriguing uh it's sika ika out of baylor uh i get it people love this dude's athleticism at 350 uh did he make my top 20 28 i have him at 28 so i'm a little bit lower on him but yeah i i could see him being a good riser man like again a dude that can like be a legit pass rusher show that type of explosiveness and penetrating ability at 350 you're probably gonna go high all right look at that Keishan obute dude love this dude's after the catch i don't think there's much to talk about with him uh really the only thing is hopefully he comes back really good after the ankle injury it required two surgeries over the off season so hopefully that doesn't do anything to his like explosiveness this dude is a really good athlete. Oh, do we have uh, Michael Mayer coming up at 15? Yes, we do. Michael Mayer. Look, and we got Peter Skaronsky. And I think this is about the area I have both those guys. Uh, Michael Mayer I have at 19. Skaronsky I have at 17. So top 50. Top, 50, top 20. <laughs> so it makes a of sense. Um, like, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Mayer has, like, that generational, like, he's not a generational athlete for the uh, the uh, tight end position. Like, you could you even see Bruce, like, lay it out here. He doesn't have top-tier athleticism, but I still think he could be a lock for, like, the mid to late first round just simply because he's a very good blocker, uh, a good chain mover, solid hands, and... He can he's just tough to bring down after the catch. Peter Skronsky, there's gonna be questions about his uh length. Really, I mean it's a lot we're just kinda eyeballing it at this point, but won't really know more until like uh combine. So Yeah, for some like look, you can list him as guard or tackle. Uh keep in mind he was recruited as a center and had to play left tackle out of uh, necessity because of Rashawn Slater um, opting out. But dude's been wonderful ever since he was the, since his freshman year. So, like, yeah, no, a lot to like with him. Whether you view him as an interior prospect or a tackle prospect, I think that mid to late first round's about right for him regardless. Jackson Smith Najigba. Look at this. People get mad at me, and I had, like, said i'm too low on the guy i had him at 16 we see him here at 17 for dane brugler i'm just saying i'm just saying so i'm curious why he has him that way so shall call him the best route i ever played with with only average size and speed which i agree with that like i think ath athletically like there there are definitely some questions like not like jackson smith Najigba is like a like phenomenal athlete but he is a very smooth route runner a very smooth and functional athlete so that, that's why i think a lot of people are starting to like pigeonhole him into the slot for the nfl but we'll see we'll see i think he's gonna retain that slot role too for at ohio state uh paris johnson big fan might be the best person in this draft straight up like this guy, go check out his volunteer work. Check out his charity. This dude is a great person, and he's got legit. He's got all the uh, traits to be a solid left tackle uh, there at Ohio State. So played right guard last year. So very excited to see him play left tackle. Like I think yeah, between him, Broderick Jones, and Peter Skronsky, one of those guys are going to end up the top tackle in this class. Uh, Eric Gilbert. I think this this cat will ascend if he has a banger year if he comes out and shows just uh since we didn't see him last year because of personal reasons but just comes out and shows that like that athleticism like rumor is this dude's up to like 260 so i got him listed at 248 but rumor at the spring game he was 260 and they might be playing him on the outside so like 
or like watch out like gilbert look okay let's see what he said here look to be a future top 10 pick uh Okay, okay, okay. Basically the same things I've said, but yeah. Dude's real good. Dude's real good. I actually have him inside my top 10. Speaking of inside my top 10, Isaiah Foski. Uh, this guy's got a very high floor. I'll say that. Just a guy with his type of length. Um, I think he's got very good get off. Uh, he's a very good run defender. Typically, that's a recipe for success in the NFL. Can he put it together to be an elite pass rusher? That's a question I'm kind of baking on that happens this year for him. Uh, and I think uh, I have him at actually nine on my big board. Uh, here's the interesting one. Tyree Wilson. It seems like everyone and their mom's high on Tyree uh, Wilson, except for me. Maybe that just says something about me. Maybe uh, I'll turn over a new leaf. But uh, I do think looking at that size, 6'6", 270. He does play on the outside and on the inside for texas tech but i really do think he does his best work on the inside uh i think like ideal ideally he's gonna be a five tech so like that a three four ed and uh yeah he's got great length good strength it's just i can't i i don't think he's got a lot of good pass moves i think even i think even dale puts it he like okay look dane even says it here he lacks refinement he's just a little more polished um and I go back to that Mississippi St State game where it's like, oh, he was unblockable. Except for whenever he went up against Charles Cross, who was another top 10 prospect. So that's where my hesitations are. I think I still ended up having a third round grade on him. Uh, maybe not. Where are you at? Okay, fourth round grade, but among my edge, my my ranked edge prospects, he's the first one with a day three grade. So that's pretty good. All right. Noah Sewell, like I said, this guy, if he um can clean up as a tackler, which I think it can, I think a lot of it is just mentality. He wants to hit the pants off of somebody. And if he could just be better in like an overall, like, uh, coverage doesn't even have to be great just a little bit more prowess and coverage and cleaning up those tackles that's kind of the big thing for Noah soul yo you gonna have my boy clark phillips yes he is i love clark phillips similar in ways to trent mcduffie whoa phillips slightly undersized and isn't expected to run a 4 three forty. like i think he's a good athlete i don't think it, obviously not a top tier athlete but like he can play outside and in the slot. Uh, I know at that size, there's some hesitation about that. Uh, that's probably why he ranks so low on my board. Uh, where are you at? I got him at 41. So still, dude's a banger of a prospect. All right. You know what? It's nice to see someone that isn't me that's... A little bit lower on antonio johnson because i've seen antonio johnson in everybody's like top 10. so says johnson might be the most intriguing impressive physical traits uh but in instincts versatile is the playing card who can play corner nickel safety he said his best when he can float underneath and match up against slot well yeah he was mainly a slot guy and i like we i get it. He, he's got that versatility but i want to see him um play more whether it's on the outside or playing safety i'd rather see him play that a bit more than just a slot i feel like okay if you're just going to be the top slot guy then uh, top slot slot corners typically fall in draft like typically those we're seeing those guys get picked up at the uh somewhere on day two whether it's like early day two or even late day two um uh, I have Johns, Aaron Johnson. Oh, gosh. How low am I on him? Oh, no. Okay. I'm at 34, so I'm actually 10 spots lower or higher, I guess. Uh, Cam Smith. Big fan of Cam Smith. The, the South Carolina prospects, man. They're competitors. Uh, Brian Branch. This is my top safety. Huge fan of Brian Branch. Love this cat. 
Uh, might not have elite size yet, dude. That guy can bulk up, dude. That dude can bulk up. He's such a good athlete. Like, I think he can play a variety of different roles in the secondary. I know he primary played slot, and I just got, like, done talking about how Johnson, Antonio Johnson played slot. To be fair, I have both those guys, like, ranked within, like, the same vicinity. They're within 10, like, spots of each other, so. But... I, I, I really love Branch's ball skills. Here's Anthony Richardson. Uh, let's be honest with Anthony Richardson. The, like, this is like boom or bust for a lot of a lot of people. Like, if he ends up not not showing better time in it and anticipation on his passes, because uh, keep in mind this is the first time we're gonna see him like as a full time starter. So. Uh, there's some expectation here, but the dude does have the upside. Uh, Quentin Johnston, dude. Huge fan of this cat. Dude, th I, I love this guy. I I, I said I think I said it in the last video where I was like, uh, I think it was my uh, my own big board. Where I was like, this, this is a guy where you go to the Oklahoma, Oklahoma game and you just turn on the Barry White, the boys, the men, whatever gets you going. Like sensually because visually that's what Quentin Johnston does to you like I love this guy's size and I love uh I love that he's actually got good I think he's got good lawn speed all right Gervin Dexter ridiculous size guy that can play legit anywhere on that defensive line expect him to uh blow up uh I think I have him a little bit lower on my boy yeah I got him at 35 but definitely a guy that could uh go much higher Will McDonald had a farm. E I E I O. Ultimately, I think he goes around in this range. I think he's going to go in the Arnold Ebiketti, uh, Boye Mafe range because he's similar. Like, at least he's going to be similar in terms of age to those prospects. And uh, he's probably going to be much closer to, I think, Ebiketti, who uh, among last year's like prospects after you get. Like after Pat, after you're like after uh, was it Kayvon Thibodeau and um, and Hutchinson, like it was actually Arnold Ebiketti who a majority of his pressures and sacks came within like the first two to three seconds of a snap. So, like statistically, that's typically a stat you want to go to. And Will McDonald is like that dude. The dude has incredible get off, great speed, explosiveness. Uh, he actually played play. He actually played a variety of spots along the uh, the defensive line there for Iowa State. All right, uh, Zach Evans. Yeah, dude's former five star recruit. Everyone's expecting him to blow up there at Ole Miss. Uh, it just seemed like TCU was never just a good, never really a good fit. For him, um, they never really like relied on him as like the workhorse of that offense, though he should have been. So we'll see it at Ole Miss, man. I, I think he will explode. I don't know about 31. That's still a bit high. Uh, I think he is actually literally number 50 on my big board. All right. Joey Porter? All right, all right. I got, listen, I'm a little bit lower on him because of... Um, he too handsy, and there are there are a lot, there are times where he is just like he just sits in assignment, looking for something to do. It's like, dude, go find something to do, bro. Like, come on, go be a game changer, like we know you can be. So, honestly, like top fifty, uh, it won't surprise me if he's a top fifty prospect. He could, he could, honestly at his like length and size. He could sink into the first round. He could. Also, another guy that's an incredible character. Uh, here's Andre Carter. Wow. I I I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm higher on him. Though, I feel like I'm not. Because like, if you look at the way I talked about Anthony, or on, Anthony, Andre Carter in my edge ranking video, you would think I was not that high. And then he ends up being, I think, 10 or 11 on my big board just i get it what like his traits and i think the minute that dude hits an nfl weight room watch out but he for, 
for all intents and purposes, he's still a pretty unpolished prospect. Jordan Addison, this is about where I had him. I had him at 31. He's here at 34. Listen, I think the dude could get bullied. I really do at that size. Uh, he's not Devontae Smith in terms of, yeah, he's a little slim, but he plays physical at the uh, at the line, and he's physical throughout his route. Jordan Addison ain't that guy. He just ain't. Uh, whoa, 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 Tucker Craft. Listen, okay, I went and watch. I went back and watched Tucker Craft because people popped his name up in my tight end video. So I'm not this high on this cat. I don't think he's like. I still think he's a work in progress as a blocker. I still think this dude's ball skills require work. Let me look at my write up of this cat. Yeah, cause I got. I got I got a day three grade. I'll just say that I got a day three grade on this cat. All right, I said he isn't that explosive. I felt like he was he was a little bit a uh, little bit applauded in the uh, or I, I guess as a route runner um, where he's like he he was more so of a find the soft spot in zones and then take advantage of. Uh, here, let's see what else uh i said there's a lot of there's a lot of puzzling drops because i i did say i think he has like he showed he stro showed strong hands 9 to 12 on contested catches but close to 10 percent drop rate like he does have a lot of how'd you drop that uh yeah yeah i think this is too high for him I th there, there's other guys I like here, like Sam Laporta, Jaheim Bell, Dalton Kincaid. So we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe we see it in tune at the end of the year, because uh, that's a good size, and he's actually a really good athlete for that size. Kobe Wooden, big fan. He's a bit of a tweener, bit of a tweener though. Uh, he was a top seventy-five prospect for me, maybe in top sixty as well. Uh. 64 have him at 64 uh so yeah this it's cool to see him get a get some uh some hype maybe he ends up being like the logan hall in this class uh wow jl skinner for me that's too high for a box safety like he's gonna be a hell of a good box safety uh even a split high guy but still feels too high for him uh here let me see yo hold up okay he plays with speed and range of a smaller athlete eh. but uh i love this like maybe not comp but it's like this comparison which i guess is a comp J Rock, uh jaron curse that's a hell of a comparison i like that a ton is it isn't curse like low like maybe like 220 227 Excuse me, man, my nose is stuffy. 6'4", 227. Okay, thought so. All right, so I like the comp. I don't know if I'm going to be this high on Skinner, though. Uh. Oh, this is from the spring game. It's Gibbs. Okay. So Jameer Gibbs. He has him at 38. I have him at 45. All right. I mean, hey, straight up. Everyone, everyone, their mom knows I'm lower on running backs. Um, I'm kind of interested how he fits in to Alabama. It'll be kind of like a T.Y. Yeldon. Uh, we got Garrett Williams here. Big fan of him. Yo. I'm, I just saw that he's pointed out like Mikel Jones, but why is he listed? Yo, is he listed Sean Tucker here? Because Sean Tucker didn't make his top 50. Yo, I love Sean Tucker. To me, he is the number two back in this class. Yeah, Mikel Jones is interesting. This is a guy that's... Like, go watch my linebacker rankings. Like, go, I'll talk, I, I talk about him there. But, like, he actually covers a lot of ground very quick. Uh, especially in those Syracuse, like, mug fronts where he's lining up uh, between the... Uh, like the uh, A and the B gaps. 
So when he has to like fly back, because they they play like a uh, a Tampa two. So when he's playing that like center fielder role, he has to fly to his spot. But Garrett Wilson's pretty good too. Uh, <laughs> you're talking about Mikel Jones, and I'm like just. Ignore the fact that Garrett Wilson's number 39. Zach Harrison, we know if this dude puts it together, he could be a top prospect. Ooh, same for this guy, Zach Pickens. Zach Pickens didn't put didn't give him a day two grade. So he actually has a uh, fourth round grade for me, I believe. Um, forgot where exactly he's on my big board. Probably in like the 110, 120 area, I want to say. Not positive though. Um, I guess I could look while I talk, but the thing is, this guy has so many incredible high-end reps. I just want to see more, more dominance consistent, uh, consistently from Pickens, because we we know he's capable of it. So, like we thought last year might be his coming out party, didn't really happen. So maybe it'll be this year. Um, where are you at? He's got to be here. Oh, okay. So I, I was a little bit lower. 134. But again, another a guy that could be a stupid hot riser. Uh, Tyler Davis. Wow, Tyler Davis. Okay, injuries have really cost Tyler Davis because dude had a bonkers, bonkers, bonkers uh, freshman season. Now, he doesn't have ideal size or length. But this guy works with very good le leverage, uses hands very well, uh, and just has a nonstop motor. So hopefully we'll see him fully healthy because uh, what was it that caught? Like, I know last year it was the bicep injury that caused him the middle of the season. Um, and I, uh, I want to say it's a it was a hip. No, it was an ankle. I knew it was a leg injury. But an ankle injury cost him his sophomore Um his 2019 season so or was it not 2019 his 2020 season so again this cat can have a healthy season definitely could be a big riser on my board uh Derek Hall I loved I, I like Derek Hall a lot he just missed my edge rankings um but this dude flies 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 255 is that where I have him listed at Okay, 251. Okay, it's not too it's not too far off. But I got I got Derek Hall as a top 50. But pretty big fan. I actually got him ahead of uh, Zach Harrison. But like uh I got questions about what he could do as a run defender. Uh Layden Robinson. I've been telling y'all, man, watch out for this cat. If he could have put put it together as a pass blocker, like I'm just saying, Kenny Green goes top 15. I could see Lane Robinson sneaking into the first round. Oh, my boy, Tyreek Stevenson. Look at this. You look at that 6'1", 214. Oh, wow, he's a safety. Nah, he's a corner, baby. Dude's got ridiculous size, and he's a great athlete to boot. Uh, Osiris Torrance, big fan of his. Uh, I'm obviously a bit lower than dane is here he was top 100 for me though where do i have him oh did he just miss top 100 he did he was 104 uh but i do think he could be a big riser it's just not like he's an ideal athlete but again you can kind of get away with that you don't have to be the best athlete of the world at the guard or center position it Dude's got strong hands. Dude, dude does his best work in close quarters. So, honestly, could definitely see him being a lot higher on my board as the season goes on. Uh, Jalen Duncan. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that was another guy that actually made my top 100. Or no, just missed it. He's 101. So 101 Dalmatians. 101 is uh, Duncan for me. But you can see why a lot of people like this cat. Good movement skills. Uh, David. Uh, ah chain he's a bl i feel like he's just a speedster and that's it i don't know we'll see this year if he can evolve his game i have my doubts which kind of like puts him <coughs> excuse me more as a third rounder so oh delicious 
Tanner McKee. Oh, man. That's right. We have it. Oh, we didn't see Tyler Van Dyke. <gasps> he doesn't have Tyler Van Dyke on here. Uh-oh. But I like Tanner McKee. Runs a pro-style offense. Uh, really, I, th I would say elevates his team. Puts the team on his back. Uh, he, I have him, obviously, a lot higher. Uh, he's 29. And then, hey, Jordan Battle. I do love you, Jordan Battle. Uh, there are going to be questions about his range. But uh, this dude, I think in terms of safety, the way like his mentality and just I think he's actually a pretty darn good athlete. Uh, makes him, one, I think, this one of the safer safety prospects in this class. But, uh, yeah, he's top 50 for me. I think he was like 47. it was 47 but let me know what you think in the comment section below that's it for the video go ahead do the youtube thing as always until next time you be easy my friends later